They are preparing for D-Day, the day they will take up their weapons. The Laurel Highlands Ghost Company. Just want to protect our our state, uh, our way of life, our constitution. I brought my body armor. I brought this uh, six-hour AR pistol, which is for close quarters battle. I brought a MP5. This is a training weapon. It, uh, it's an airsoft weapon. That's for a, like indoor type training. I brought my long range rifle, which has a, has a 270. Uh, my AR-15, which is for medium to long range engagements. Six a.m. in the morning. These men are getting ready for their morning patrol in full gear with weapons, ammunition, bulletproof vests. A woman is here too. Outside, it's minus five degrees Celsius. You always want to be prepared for whatever could possibly come up. Meet Arc 2, your personal camera assistant. It automatically tracks your movement and keeps you in. This group is part of the so-called Pennsylvania Lightfoot Militia, a heavily armed militia in the state's southwest. Each member of the team covers their sector of fire. So in this position I'll be looking off to my right just to see if I can, what I can see, if I can see something. We want to see a threat before they see us, and we want to be able to respond to that as quickly as possible. Everybody knowing their job in the column, covering your sectors of fire, uh, working as a team, unit discipline, working together. Any movement that, I mean, it's all situational, but really it's just what we, what we deem a threat at that time. You know, currently there are no threats, but that's what we're training for. The Pennsylvania Lightfoot Militia has a total of about 200 members, divided into 17 units. There are five militias altogether in this state, not too far away from Washington. The Second Amendment was written to guarantee the people the right to have the same firepower that the government possessed, in the case that the government became tyrannical then the people could step in and set things right. For the militia members, the possession of weapons is their fundamental right, secured in the Bill of Rights, the constitutional amendments, a right that nobody can take away from them and that they are ready to defend against all odds. I would not turn my gun in. I would not. Just like I wouldn't stop saying what I want to say. Just like um, I would not give up my um, my right to a fair and speedy trial, you know. Um, there's just things that you can't you can't allow them to take. This weekend, the self-proclaimed defenders of the country train for hours with different weapons, especially the switch from one to the other. If you're in a firefight or anything like that one of your guns is going to end up running out. So you've got to have something to fall back onto and you've got to get it switched between the two as quick as possible. Ready? You can't rely on everybody else to fight your own battles. If the battle's brought to you, then you need to make sure that you're standing up for what you think is right. If I think it's right, then I'm not going to call somebody to fight my battles for me. I'm going to, I'm going to bring the fight right back to them. We kind of prefer not to have to use them. You know, it, it's, don't get me wrong, we, we love to come out and, and train with them and, and keep our skills sharp. You know, but coming out and training with a weapon and keeping your skills sharp and actually having to end another human being's life are two very different things. And we're not hoping to do the latter. All right, guys, here we are. 
Um, this is our November FTX. Uh, it's going to be cold. Ball with the, gun. the militia members that are here this weekend are an interesting mix. Veterans, roofers, construction workers, nurses. Christian, the commander, used to be in the Navy. Now the 47-year-old works as a machinist. They all have one thing in common. Fear. The fear that their America will change in a direction that they don't like. It started out politically and everything because we were all afraid of Obama. We were all afraid of what he was going to do. Um, because a lot of the stuff and everything, I didn't vote for him. I knew here in my heart that there was something wrong with that dude. <laughs> and I never voted for him either time. I don't care what color he was. Well, you you know, and the, the people and everything, well, you don't like blacks. You're racist and everything like that because he's a black president. No, I don't care what color he is. There's something not right about him. I don't feel good about his politics. Karen Gremling is a founding member of the Pennsylvania Lightfoot Militia. The 66-year-old has also served in the military. Now she is a combination of the regiment's mom and spiritual leader. She, she trains regularly with these two rifles and carries another weapon on her body. That's my, uh, my Glock 19. Gen 4. I carry it everywhere I go because I can't defend myself. Being a disabled vet, it's just an impossibility. And it's fully loaded, one in the chamber. Whatever, yeah. If somebody comes after me and everything and starts, you know, I can just go like this, hit the trigger, and they're. That's it. <laughs> All the weapons here, legally purchased, for defense purposes, they say, not as a threat. I'm not saying that the world all thinks that we're good guys now because there's still a lot of people out there who don't understand who we are. In some ways we're more liked, in some ways we're more disliked depending upon who you're asking. Uh, we live in a very politically charged climate in this country right now. The militia is viewed generally as a right-wing kind of organization, which is a huge misconception. Once a month, the militia members meet for training in the forests of Pennsylvania. This time, urban warfare is also part of the training. They practice to defend their country, but actually against what enemy? Anybody that would take and stand and rip away the the liberties given by the founding fathers of the nation. An invasion. Uh, I, I know it sounds far-fetched, but we just saw it happen in Crimea a few years ago, where uh, Crimea was invaded, you know, and it is now part of Russia again after its liberation and separation. So could that happen here? Yeah, it could happen anywhere. Hey, you didn't hit that target. There you go. Japanese Admiral uh, Yamamoto said, um, you know, they can't invade mainland United States because there would be, uh, behind every blade of grass would be an American with a rifle. I'm the American with the rifle. I took an oath in 1994, August 17th of 94. I took an oath to the nation. I took an oath to the people of the country. I took an oath to my family, my friends, and the oath does not expire. That oath expires the day I expire. It's not necessarily a speed thing at this point, or, or technique. Now they're doing war games. This afternoon, how to find enemies inside a house. But not everything goes according to plan. Come back. You're dead. I'm dead. Yeah. You're coming up. Yo, bang bang. Go slow. Bang bang. 
You step out, you're already dead. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bang, bang, then hit the, hit the room. Some of the people in my area that I live by think I'm a little extreme, but that's only because they're not aware. We have a Second Amendment. We have a Constitution in place for a reason. And if we don't stand up for it, who is? We're a voice. So, and we're a voice that's not going away. We're a loud voice, and we're going to get louder. First line. First line up. First line up. These pictures, recorded by the militia members. Here they are in Charlottesville, Virginia, during a white nationalist rally in the summer of 2017. Christian Yingling, the commander of the Pennsylvania Lightfoot Militia and his group are right in the middle of it. In order to intermediate, he tells us. But then, there are bloody, violent clashes between white nationalists and left-wing counter-protesters. When we were in uh, Charlottesville, we we didn't agree with what the the people on the alt right side were doing. We didn't agree with what the people on the left were doing. You know, we kind of provide, we kind of try to provide that buffer, so that you know both sides can kind of say what they want to say. But many left wing demonstrators perceived the militia with their warlike equipment more as a provocation, as a shield for the right wing extremists. In the end, on that day in August 2017, one woman had died, many more got injured. The militia has, at one point or another, has, I'll call it demonized. Um, you'll have a group of people out there who, you know, they want to they want to kind of corral us into a picture that they think we are. By going out into the public, showing our faces, answering the questions. Being there for citizens on the one side and being part of a citizen militia with strong political views and big love for weapons on the other, a difficult balancing act. What the militia members don't want, being seen as extremists who are just waiting for a time when they can use their huge arsenal of weapons. But they want to be ready just in case, as they always emphasize. And that's why they train not just on this weekend. Weekly, I probably put in... Four, probably ten hours a week um, training. And then, you know, then a whole weekend a month. Bob is a roofer, married with two children. He has been a member of the Lightfoot Militia for four years now. Roughly $400 a month, what I spend just in ammunition. Those are my sacrifices, you know, as far as financially, and then time away from my family. Um, you know, I, I sacrifice a lot, you know, but that sacrifice is for them. If there must be a war, let the war be in my life so that my kids don't have to live through that. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And the members of the militia sense danger from the inside and the outside. They don't like what happens on the southern border of the United States. That is also why they are now training on land navigation, the orientation in a terrain that is sometimes difficult to analyze, to see, like on the border with Mexico. Yeah, so I get one telephone pull. I've been to the southern border, I've walked the southern border, I've patrolled the southern border. It's not what you think. It's not what the press puts out. It's worse. Honestly, I believe that anybody that want to just go down to the border and make sure that nobody's coming across it should be allowed. Uh, I have nothing against legal immigration by any means. If you want to come here, by all means, do it legally. I definitely don't agree with those coming here illegally just to reap our benefits and you know, get away with everything like that. On this weekend, the militia members are training together for 48 hours. Patrolling and securing the site are priorities, but some reach their limits. It's a little rough. Burns the knees. It's hard to control your breath. 
very rewarding when you get to the top, but it's it's tough. If you don't have the cardio, uh, it sucks. That's why we're stopping so much. Some of the guys just don't have it. You'll get there. That's why we're here. Finding the right people though, not easy for Christian, the commander of the militia. He gets many inquiries, but finds not many people suitable for this. Okay, I've said for a long time now that you don't pick members up off of Facebook. We have a recruiting page. Personally, I'd like to wipe my ass with it. Because 90% of the recruits we got off that page have done nothing. Only going to accept people who are putting effort in. You know, people who are willing to push themselves to do what we, to do what, what it is we do. You know, you can't expect to sit back on your laurels and eat bonbons and watch The Walking Dead and be able to, to survive a firefight. The militia members that are here this weekend are diehards, including Ron. She's 49 years old, mother of three children, a truck driver by trade. And she's a good shooter. Before she joined the Lightfoot militia, she hadn't fired a single shot in her life. And I love the smell. I'm not as young as I used to be, that's for sure. So the physical challenges are real. I just have to work on that. Other than that, I can do everything they can do. Maybe better. The militia officially supports neither the Republicans nor the Democrats. But where the members stand politically is clear, significantly further to the right than to the left. And hardly anyone makes a secret of it. I voted for Donald Trump, and I'm not afraid to say that. Like, I don't agree with 50 to 60% of what Trump says or does, but he most closely identifies with my beliefs. You know, if, if Hillary Clinton wouldn't say some of the things she says and share some of my viewpoints, then I would have voted for her. But based on how we are as, a, as, a, as the system l lies, I, I vote, and I, currently I'm going to vote for Trump again. Okay, and while they're doing that... He was put into office because God wanted him there. Okay, bottom line. God has a plan for this nation, and part of that plan and everything is to have Trump in there because he's a businessman. He knows how to run a business, so he should know how to run the country. The commander's approach is a different one, though. He doesn't want to rely on any president, on any government, only on himself and his weapons. Guns have been a part of our culture. It's who we are. You know, we are, we are a rebellious people. We are a free people.